While I'm sure you guys know how much respect I have for Knights of the Old Republic, to me, Battlefront 2 is right there with it as one of the very best Star Wars games and one of the most enjoyable games I have ever played in my life. I remember playing this game day in and day out with my brother back in the day on our PS2. It was without a doubt our definitive shooter and the game that I probably spent the most amount of time playing on that console. It wouldn't surprise me at all if it turned out that I had played over 500 or hell, maybe even a thousand hours of that damn game. And I hope I'm not alone in feeling that way either. Both Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 are beloved shooters that provided one of the most authentic ways to experience the Star Wars universe. In fact, I would go as far to say that these games showed us the real chaos of Star Wars combat long before the Rogue One movie did. From blowing people away with a blaster rifle or hopping into an X-Wing and blowing up stuff in that glorious over-the-top Star Wars tradition. Are you blind? The Battlefront series came out on just about every platform, including the PS2, the Xbox, hell, even the PSP slash Vita. The best version of Battlefront is of course the one on PC, and if you want to get it today, Steam is the place to go. It's just a few bucks and I promise you, it's worth every single cent, and it still holds up to today. Because the first two games were so successful, there was never any doubt that a third game would go into development. Battlefront 3 was going to be that definitive, ultimate Battlefront game, but in the end, it just never was meant to be, as Battlefront 3 was cancelled before so much as a demo was released. Instead, in this unfortunate reality, what we have today is a reboot. Now, don't get me wrong, DICE has done a very respectable job giving us their vision of what a Battlefront game should look like. In many ways, the Battlefront reboot is a technical and production marvel that is without a doubt one of the most immersive games you can ever play. It's just that it doesn't feel the same as the Battlefront games we loved to play so much before, and that's why I hated the living guts out of it when it first came out and cursed EA for blemishing one of my favorite childhood games. Now, I will admit after playing the game recently to get footage for this video, my opinion has kind of changed to meh, it's, it's alright after playing the game complete with its free updates. I'm still not buying that season pass EA. However, over the years we've seen bits and pieces of what Battlefront 3 could have been under the development of free radical design. As I'm sure you can imagine, just for me, this is especially frustrating because it seems like Battlefront 3 was basically close to done when it was cancelled. To this day, there's still a lot of confusion as to why this game was canned. LucasArts said that the studio wasn't performing up to scratch and some studio employees have said the opposite saying LucasArts wasn't willing to market the game. But whatever the real reason was for the cancellation of the game, we never got to buy it or play it officially. And maybe somewhere in a parallel universe we got to play Free Radical's vision of the most ambitious Battlefront game ever made. With huge battles and ground to space gameplay, in this universe we can only wonder and just play that other game, which... who am I kidding? So luckily, PC modders have not been very happy to let things stand at this point. Over the years there have been a lot of leaked code and assets that have anonymously made their way onto the internet over the years. This means that there were enough bits and pieces to build something that probably would represent what Free Radical Designs wanted to do with the franchise. It's been a long road and some other attempts at bringing us what might have been are already being crushed under the jackboot of EA. Galaxy in Turmoil was not a mod, but a full fan remake that was going to get its own Steam release. Valve had even agreed to release it until Lucasfilms was forced by EA to put a stop to it. Lucasfilm actually told Galaxy and Terminal's devs that they would have been open to a deal, but that their contract with EA prevented it and EA was afraid that it would affect sales of their Battlefront game. It's a real pity because Galaxy and Turmoil really looked amazing based off of what I could see in the videos. It's just that it flew a little close to the sun this time around. Now, I don't want to rip on the IP owners too much though, since historically non-profit Star Wars projects have been largely ignored by LucasArts. They understood more than anyone that it was the intense and almost religious Star Wars fanbase that kept the franchise alive throughout the years. I mean, to be real here, it's not like they're Nintendo or anything who will nuke you from orbit with a Death Star just for having one snippet of their IP or the name in their video title, even if it's legitimately covered under fair use. Yeah, flag this Nintendo. But even still, just to get to the heart of this, there's a new mod on the scene. The mod I'm talking about is Battlefield 3 Legacy, 
and it's a conversion mod for Battlefront 2, so it's much less likely to attract the same sort of heat. I have to say that although it's still in very early beta, I've been very impressed with what the mod team has brought to Battlefront. It's not a light mod of Battlefront 2, but a substantial expansion of the base game. We'll never know how closely this mod matches what Battlefront 3 would have been like, but I think for now it is the closest thing we're going to get. I mean just look, just look at this shit! This is what Battlefront should have been, DICE! The modders did an excellent job making it feel as if this was a huge expansion of Battlefront 2. While there are only two maps, Coruscant and Kato Nimadia, I think that's how it's pronounced, the mod overhauls a lot of models from Battlefront 2. The biggest changes that I feel will be a hit or miss for some people are the new changes to the classes. It seems like the modders wanted to buff the special classes for each faction because, well, they should be special, and their loadouts have been drastically altered. The Republic's commandos have a very similar weapon to the chain gun, and it packs some serious heat as well. They also get a thermal imploder, which I'm going to assume is going to function much like the one in DICE's Battlefront. As you can see, this mod is still very much in beta, as particle effects and explosions are missing. So make sure you're extra careful running around the battlefield unless you want to get blown away by an invisible explosion. The Republic also has a huge overhaul of the Jet Troopers, who now have a Tri-Blaster Rifle, the good old EMP Launcher, and the brand new addition of Flash Grenades, which I imagine would be really good against human players when capping an objective, and an Orbital Strike, which again functions much like the Orbital Strike from DICE's Battlefront. Except this one you can actually see rain down, which is actually pretty cool. The CIS on the other hand has uh, only one big change, and I don't know how I feel about it. The Magna Guard has been given a huge upgrade, equipping them with Electro Staffs, and if that wasn't crazy enough, they upgraded the Magna Guard's movements to what looks like the same sort of movement speed as a Jedi or Sith almost. That's right, these dudes can run really fast, and due to the stun lock effect melee weapons have in the game, if you have two of these guys pull up on you even as a Jedi, they will clap your cheeks so quick that you'll stare at your screen hurt. The heroes on these two maps also have been changed. General Grievous, one of my favorite characters, returns with an updated model and animations more true to the films, and still feels amazing to play. Did I mention that his sprint now actually has him running around like a spider? It's, it's actually pretty horrifying. General Grievous is here. Watch out for the arms. The other villain the CIS has gained may have you a little bit hyped if you were a fan of the Clone Wars cartoon. I know I was pleasantly surprised to see that you have the option to play as, yes, that's right, Ventress, the once apprentice of Count Dooku and assassin for the CIS. She wields dual lightsabers with the ability of saber throw and force choke. I think she also has some new animations compared to other dual wielding characters as well from Battlefront 2. For the Republic, it's a different story as they have two brand new heroes that you may have never seen before. On Coruscant, X2 is a Force-sensitive clone trooper who has a very interesting backstory within the Star Wars lore, but in the game he's really only seen as a clone trooper on steroids, which at this moment I'm kind of indifferent about, but I think it would have been really nice to see him using some Force abilities in his kit. I think it really would have matched with his lore and would have been really cool to see from a gameplay perspective a hero that's a hybrid of Force powers and gun mechanics. The other Republic hero is a Jedi named Fjorda. Now from what I've gathered, he was a Jedi Master during the Clone Wars and was killed during the execution of Order 66 by none other than our friend I previously mentioned, X2. Now, I do recall seeing him in some old leak prototypes of Battlefront 3's apparent story campaign, but Fiorda is in fact in Battlefront Elite Squadron, which was the mobile version of the Battlefront series on PSP and Nintendo DS. From what I've been able to gather, I don't think he's canon in the Star Wars universe, but he's just a new character created by Free Radical. Either way, he plays just like most Jedi, but he does have a unique force ability to force push everything 360 degrees around him. Not only have there been visual upgrades to characters, but weapons as well on both sides. This is all still very in beta, so there's probably even more upgrades yet to come, but the biggest thing about this mod, the one feature we all dreamed of, is actually working in this mod. Space to ground combat. Okay, well, the foundation of it, but you can see the huge potential and insane battles that can happen with this game changer, which I only dreamed of as a kid. You're actually able to move from ground to space combat using any flying vehicle. Now, while I struggled a little bit early on to figure out how to land on the battlefield, which I'm guessing the mods are still trying to figure that out, 
I was fully able to have dogfights around the battlefield and swoop in for a quick air to ground strike to help out with the troops below in somewhat battlefield fashion. But the coolest thing without a doubt was being able to jet into the sky and slowly transition seamlessly from the planet's atmosphere into space where a huge space battle is taking part with massive cruisers and capital ships. When I did this for the first time, it was like having my childhood dreams fully realized, like a child who grows up wishing to go to space and finally having the opportunity to as an astronaut. If any of the developers who are working on this mod are watching this, I just want to end this video by saying thank you. You guys have allowed me to relive one of my most treasured memories in a whole new light. I can't wait to see future progress on Battlefront 3 Legacy. A lot of the time I feel you guys are really underappreciated in the gaming community and I cannot stress enough how much modders have contributed to the PC gaming world over the years. These guys work for months, no, maybe even years, usually with no money to produce some of the best gaming content anywhere. You'd be surprised how much AAA gaming took inspiration from things that modders did first. To play the beta of the Legacy mod and eventually the final version, you'll need to own Battlefront 2 and download the mod. If the mod really is successful, you can expect a lot of people like myself are going to do just that and pick up Battlefront 2 on PC. So now might be a good time to buy your copy before the price gets jacked up due to increased demand. And I get it, the game has aged and maybe even that it might not be for you. But I still believe Battlefront 2 is a fantastic game and there are still a group of dedicated fans who have found a way to still carry on with online multiplayer matches. While EA may be getting ready to announce their take on Battlefront 2 this year, I'll be chilling right here, playing the game we deserved years ago.